Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness and today I'm going to show you how to make my discotheque clutch. This clutch has darts in the bottom giving it a three dimensional shape. It has pockets on the inside, a magnetic snap closure, and the focal feature of this project is of course the metal cutout handles. So grab your supplies and let's get started. Okay, before you begin cutting out your fabric and interfacing, you'll need to print out the pattern and the template. The template is on page eight of the pattern, and to open the PDF pattern file, you always wanna use Adobe Reader. So you don't wanna open up the pattern in a web browser or anything else. Open it up in Adobe Reader and print at actual size. So not scaling or fit to page, it has to be actual size. And to verify that, there's a little one inch square on the template piece. And just go ahead and take your quilting ruler and make sure that it is exactly one inch. It shouldn't be slightly smaller or slightly larger than an inch. It has to be exactly one inch. Okay, then go ahead and cut out that pattern piece to the outside of the black line. And we're gonna leave that dart intact for right now. So don't cut out the dart quite yet. Okay, so you'll be using this pattern piece to cut out according to the cutting instructions in the pattern. So you'll be cutting from lining fabric, exterior fabric, shape flex interfacing, and foam interfacing. Okay, so let me show you how to attach the lining fabric to the shape flex interfacing. So I've got one of my lining main panels and the shape flex. So one side of the shape flex feels bumpy to your fingertips. That's the side with the adhesive, and that's the side that will go against the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm gonna flip my lining so that it's face down and the shape flex right on top, again with the bumpy side against the wrong side of the fabric. And I have my iron set at the cotton setting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glide that iron over each area of the fabric until it's properly adhered. I recommend using a pressing cloth. I just don't use a pressing cloth for the videos just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. But just keep gliding your iron. You don't, don't wanna just plonk it down and then move it to different areas. Just keep it moving so that you don't have an iron shaped imprint on the back of your fabric. Okay, so when the fabric is properly adhered, you can test it by trying to peel back one corner of the fabric from the interfacing. If it peels back easily, that means you need to iron it a bit longer, and if um, it doesn't peel back, then you're good to go. So finish this step with the respective lining pieces and shape flex interfacing. Okay, so to attach the exterior fabric to the foam interfacing, if your foam is fusible, go ahead and fuse it in a similar manner to what you did with the shape flex interfacing. I like using By Annie Soft and Stable, which is a sew-in interfacing. And so I'm gonna machine baste the fabric to the foam. I like using an eighth, uh, sorry, I like using four millimeter stitch length for machine basting just because it makes the process go by a bit quicker. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and give my fabric a little press and then I'm gonna use some Wonder Clips to hold the fabric to the foam. I'm gonna sew using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And again, that's with a four millimeter stitch length. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine. Okay, so you'll repeat this process with the second exterior main panel and second piece of foam. And when you finished, make sure you change back to your regular stitch length. And mine is two and a half millimeters. Okay, so now pull that pattern piece back out and now it's time to cut the dart out. Okay, 
Okay, so we're gonna use this pattern piece to mark on the wrong side of one of the exterior main panels. So I'm gonna flip to the wrong side and we need to mark both halves. And I'm using a friction pen. Um, you can use a fabric marker or chalk, whatever you prefer. So I'm gonna take the friction pen and I'm just gonna mark the dart on one half. And again, make sure that your pattern piece and your fabric are aligned. And same thing on the other half. Okay, and I'm also, for future use, I'm also gonna take the pattern piece and just draw a line right down the center so we have the center point. Okay, so now we're gonna sew the darts and to do that, I'm gonna pinch the fabric so it's right sides together so that both of these dart legs are on top of each other. And I always like to take my finger and smooth the fabric out so that I don't pin a, a pucker into the fabric. All right, and just check the fabric and make sure the darts are aligned and they are on both sides. And I'm also gonna put a wonder clip down here. And I'm gonna pin the other side the same way. Again, I'm gonna smooth out the fabric first and then bring those dart legs so that they're right on top of each other. Okay, we're gonna sew directly on top of the line on both halves of the fabric and that will create a dart. And going forward, make sure you backstitch at start and stop of all of your seams. Okay, after you sew those darts, go ahead and flip to the wrong side of the fabric and this is what the darts should look like when sewn in. And we're going to trim each of the darts um, slightly larger than an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So it should look like that. And we're just trimming the darts down so as to reduce bulk in the finished clutch. Okay, so go ahead and press the seam. You can either press it open or to the side. I'm going to go ahead and press it open. And you'll repeat the same process with the second exterior main panel in regards to sewing the darts. So you should have both of those with the darts sewn and trimmed and pressed. Okay, so now I'm gonna take both of these exterior main panels and place them right sides together and make sure you align the darts. Okay, I'm gonna pin the bottom and the sides And it helps to pin from the top and then pin down. Okay, we're gonna sew this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So the sides and the bottom will be sewn. Okay, after you've sewn that together, we're gonna cut little notches wherever there's a curved edge. So a notch is just cutting little Vs, maybe about every half inch. And what that does is it helps reduce some of that extra fabric when we go to press the fabrics wrong sides together later on so that you have a smooth finish through the curve. And you don't need to make notches where there's a straight edge, just where there's a curve.
And you're only cutting those notches about halfway up the seam allowance. You're not getting anywhere near the stitches. Okay, go ahead and put this to the side for now and we're gonna start working on the lining. Okay, so go ahead and pull out the template and one of your lining main panels. I'm gonna mark the center on the wrong side of the fabric. And then I'm also gonna take a chalk and mark the center on the right side of the fabric. Okay, we're gonna install the magnetic snaps. So earlier when we were cutting out the fabric in the cutting instructions, there was a cutting instruction to cut two one and a half inch squares from foam. This could be either from Peltex or from plastic cross stitch template, whatever you want. It should be two of them and a one and a half inch square. And this is just to reinforce the snap because the snap is going through the lining fabric and the lining is sort of on the thin side because of the ShapeFlex interfacing. It doesn't have a bulkier interfacing like foam or something stiffer. So we wanna make sure it's reinforced so that the snap doesn't tear through the fabric. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna measure four inches down from the top edge and make a mark. And it needs to be centered so it's gonna fall right on top of this center line that I drew. Okay, so that's four inches down, and I'm gonna use the snap for marking the prong placement. So some snaps come with washers, mine did. Some do not come with washers. Either way, it's okay. So if yours did not come with a washer, you're just gonna center the snap on top of the marking, and you're gonna mark the prongs where they are. So to the inside of the first prong and to the outside of the second. Since mine have the washers, I'm gonna go ahead and use the washer to mark the prong placement. So I'm going to align the center opening on the washer right on top of the marking that I made. And then I'm just gonna draw where both of the slips are. And I'll do the same thing on one of the one and a half inch squares as well. Okay, so I'm gonna take my seam ripper and make a slit through all of the prong placement markings that I made. And you always want to start with a small slit because you can always make a small slit bigger, but if you accidentally make your slit too big, then you're sort of stuck. Okay, and I'm just going to slide my seam ripper at the top of the marking and just kind of drag it a little bit. I usually like to follow up any kind of slits that I've made in fabric with seam sealant, so either Fray Check or Fray Block is another brand. And I'm just going to put a dab on top of each of the slits that I made. Okay, so I'm gonna insert one of the snaps, it doesn't matter which one, through the right side of the fabric. And if you need to make your slits a little bigger, go ahead and do that, it's no problem. And then I'm gonna turn to the wrong side and I'm gonna stick this square of interfacing on top and then follow it up with the washer. Okay, so you can either use pliers or a tool to open out those prongs outward. I usually like to just lean my prong against the edge of a table and push down on it so it sort of saves my finger. So I'm gonna do this on the edge of my table really quick and then come back and show you this is what it should look like when the prongs are opened outward and this is what it looks like from the front. So you'll repeat the same process to install the second half of the snap in your second lining main panel using the same measurements. Okay, now go ahead and pull out two of your pocket pieces and we're gonna place them right sides together. And we're gonna pin along the top straight edge only. Okay, we're gonna sew this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. go ahead and press the seam open and then we're going to press the fabric so that they're wrong sides together. So by pressing the seam open first we can just get a nice crisp finish so that it's easier to press wrong sides together. Ok, 
Okay, and I'm just going to use my fingers to sort of roll the seam out so that the fabrics are wrong sides together. Okay, we're going to take this back over to the sewing machine and top stitch the finished edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'll go ahead and pull out one of the lining main panels and we're going to place that completed pocket directly on top. Okay, you're going to align the sides and the bottom and you'll notice that the pocket is really close to that magnetic snap. Okay, so I'm going to pull out the pattern piece again and mark the center markings right on top of the pocket because we're going to use that center marking to stitch um, a divider in the pocket. So there's two sections in this pocket. Okay, so I'm going to take the wonder clips and pin the sides and the bottom. We're going to sew the sides and the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then after we do that, we're going to sew right on top of this line, creating the divider. So when you do that, I always like to start sewing from the bottom of the pocket toward the top of the pocket. So it kind of pushes out any creases as opposed to if you started to sew up here, and the fabric got bunched up, you'd have a big pucker on the bottom. So we're going to start sewing from the bottom toward the top. Repeat that same process to attach the second packet pocket to the second lining main panel. Okay, so now it's time to sew the darts just like we did with the exterior. So I'm going to flip to the wrong side of the lining and take my pattern piece and I'm going to mark the darts in each corner. Okay, again, just like I did before, I'm going to pinch the fabric so that it's right sides together. Make sure that the dart legs are aligned and place a couple wonder clips to hold the fabric in place. Okay, again, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew the darts. So I'm going to sew right on top of the line on both halves. Again, we're going to trim the seams down and then you'll repeat the same process of sewing the dart with the second lining piece. So I'm going to press the seam open okay and then here's my second lining piece with the darts also sewn in. Okay, so now I'm going to flip these fabrics again so that they're right sides together. I'm going to align the darts and I'm going to pin the sides and the bottom. We're going to sew this as before using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'll also make sure you align those pockets too so they look even on the inside. Except we're going to leave an opening centered on the bottom in between the two darts. So around a six inch opening. And I'm just going to mark with my pen as a reminder that I need to leave that opening down there.
Okay, again, this is going to be a quarter of an inch seam allowance and make sure you leave an opening on the bottom edge. Again, I'm going to leave notches wherever there's a curved edge. Okay, so again, you have that opening in the lining. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the exterior again, and I'm going to flip the exterior so that it's right side facing out. Okay, I'm going to slide the exterior inside the lining and we're going to align the top raw edges and the side seams. So start by pinning the side seams and you can go ahead and just finger press that seam so that it's open. Let's pin those side seams first, right sides together. Okay, after you do that with the side seams, go ahead and pin the rest of the way all the way around. And you might find it helpful to align those center markings that we made earlier. So I'm going to pin the centers first and then work my way outward. Okay, we're going to sew this top edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and we're going to go all the way around the whole top edge. Okay, now it's time to pull everything right side out through the opening in the lining. So just reach in and grab the exterior and pull it out. Okay, and then slide the lining inside the exterior so that it's wrong sides together. I'm just going to take my fingers and roll the seam so that they're wrong sides together and give that a press with my iron. Okay, and I'm going to put some wonder clips on there just to hold the edges till I get it over to the sewing machine. Okay, go ahead, press, continue pressing and pinning. We're going to top stitch the entire top edge. And then for top stitching, I always like to lengthen my stitch length as well. So I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters 
and this top stitching is going to be an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we're going to install the metal oval and I went ahead and took my screws out of it already. So it's just two pieces and the screws go through the openings and you'll also need fabric glue and I'm using Beacon 3-in-1 glue, um, Beacon Fabric Tack or another fabric glue is also okay. Okay, so I could still see my center lines that I had on my lining fabric so I went ahead and transferred with chalk to the right side of my exterior. So this is the middle of my bag and I marked both sides. And this is where I'm going to install the metal oval. So I'm gonna make a mark with my ruler and chalk that's an inch and three quarters down from the top edge. And this is where we're gonna center that metal oval. Okay, so I'm just gonna use one piece for now. So the oval needs to be centered and if you wanna check to make sure with your ruler that equal amounts of fabric are showing on the inside. Okay, and also it's gonna be 3 eighths of an inch down um, from this top edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my oval up. So it should be centered on that marking. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and actually take my friction pen and draw the center of the oval. Okay, so this marking right here is where I'm going to cut. I'm just going to cut a smidge larger because this metal hardware needs to cover the opening, but you don't want to see extra fabric sticking out. Okay, because we're going to be cutting through this layer of the exterior and this layer of the lining, I like to put some pins over here just to hold the layers together so that they're not shifting as I'm trying to cut. So I'm going to smooth this out and just put a few tiny pins to hold both layers of fabric. And I'm gonna put a few around the outside of the circle as well. And like I said, this just holds the fabric so that this exterior and lining layer are not shifting around when you're trying to cut the, the circle out. Okay, so to get the opening started, I'm gonna use my seam ripper and just make a slit in here. And then I'll take my scissors and I'll cut the, the rest of the circle out. And after you finish cutting, you'll want to take this oval and place it back on the fabric and just make sure that you cut enough fabric. And if you need to cut a little bit more back, like I notice on this side over here, 
on the sides. I'm just going to trim a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put some of that seam sealant that I used earlier for reinforcing the snaps. I'm going to put some seam sealant on the fabric, so both the lining and the exterior, so that it doesn't start fray while I'm working with it. And I'm going to let this dry completely before I move on to installing the metal oval. Okay, so I'll see you back in a few minutes when this is dried, and I'll show you how to install that oval. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and just base these edges together so that it's easier to work with going forward and I can remove my pins. So I'm just going to sew um, to the inside of the circle by about an eighth of an inch. Okay, now go ahead and take the part of the oval with the four openings for the screws and we're just going to go ahead and lay them down right where that opening is and I'm going to mark with my fabric pen the areas where the openings for the screws need to be. So there's a few ways that you can make these holes in your fabric. Alright, there I see all four holes right there and right there. Okay, so you can either use a seam ripper or, or an awl, which is sort of like a, a sharp tool to make holes through fabric. If you have a tabletop press, um, you can use the tabletop press with um, your dies to make holes, or if you have a hole punch, that'll work as well. So we're going to make holes where each of the four markings are for the screws, and I'm just going to make mine with my tabletop press, but again, if you are using an awl, you can do that as well and basically you need to get all the fabric removed so that you have a clear hole for the screw to go through. Okay so I went ahead and made the four holes through both layers of fabric and like I said you want to make sure that it's a clear opening and you don't have extra fabric caught in the way so I'm just going to take my awl and make sure there's no extra fabric. Okay. So now I'm going to flip so that the exterior fabric is face down and I'm going to take out the oval which will be the front and flip to the back and these are the openings where the screws will go through. So I'm going to go ahead and seat that on top of where the openings are and I'm just going to use my awl again to make sure that I have it in the correct place and that the fabric is cleared away from the opening. And you can go ahead and test this out first before you get some glue on there. So once I'm t I've tested out where my piece is going to go, I'm going to remove it from the fabric and place some fabric glue. And I'm going to place the fabric glue right on these ridges over here and then glue it to the front of the clutch.
Okay, now it's time to add this um, back piece of the oval where the screws will go and make sure it's seated where the opening is and if you need to use um, a blunt object like this all to kind of push the fabric down, you can go ahead and do that. You can also put glue on this second oval before you put the screws in. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my screws and they're really tiny so be careful because I've lost some of them in the past. And they're just gonna screw through where the openings are. And if you're having a hard time getting your screwed in, that just means you have some fabric in the way. So take your awl or another tool and cut some of the fabric away if you need to. And just be patient. This process, especially if you're doing it for the first time, is a little bit cumbersome, but I think the results are pretty great um, for this clutch that comes together. And I think you can make it look really fancy by adding some trim, or if you make it with leather, or um, maybe some applique or embroidery on the front, I think that would be really cute. Okay, so after you've gotten this handle installed, you'll repeat the same process for the opposite side of the bag and the remaining metal oval from your set. So you'll install and cut out the opening the same for both ways. When you have both of the metal ovals installed, the last thing is to close the opening in the lining. And to do that, you'll turn toward the inside by a quarter of an inch and either slip stitch the opening closed by hand, or you can also machine stitch the opening using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Thanks so much for sewing along with me. I can't wait to see your finished clutch. Please join my Facebook group and post a photo of your finished project there. And remember, if I can do it, so can you.